yeah, I feel like my, 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 I guess vision, the vision here is more for me. Um, again, I've worked hard the last four years to get to this position. Um, and I don't want to work hard the next five years uh, as a knight to win a comp. Yeah, I feel it was more comfortable for me to, to, to stay here. To have him under our roof, I think that's um, always been a privilege. I've always looked at it that way and just so glad he's in the red and blue. And to, to make that happen, you have to come across those contracts every now and then. But to have a, a five-year plan now where it's just no clauses, we can all look forward and, and build around that's super exciting. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I can't speak on... Is it Dennis, the bullfrog, Richie? Uh, you know, he takes control of that himself. What I can say, though, is... When someone does something that's not honourable, and um, such a happy occasion like today too, you know that that person has to be accountable for that. Um, but we we're here to celebrate this you know this occasion, mate. Yes, the Dolphins were circling, but the Newcastle Knights have eventually got their man. Huge news today with Kalen Ponga signing a five-year deal with the Newcastle Knights. How do we see it? Well, it's a great, great result for Newcastle, obviously. Um, disappointing for the Dolphins, but, you know, I think um, for, in, as far as Newcastle is concerned and Kalen Pong is concerned, I mean, it's a great outcome for the city, great outcome for Kalen, I think, because, you know, you said five years, five million, Wraith, but I think it's well north of that. It will end up being well north of that in the mm -hmm. end, well north of probably $6 million. So he's getting a lot of money. Um, in the end, he wanted to stay. Um, and he's the face of that club, and it's great for the city that they've got a bloke like him to be the face of the club because... You know, there's a lot of talk this week about the family and mm. all the shenanigans that were going on. But, you know, when you sit down with Kalen, he's a really nice young bloke. And he's a perfect bloke to lead your club, take your club forward, I think. Mm. You know, if he's the face of your club, I think you're in a pretty good position. So I think it's a great outcome for the Knights. And they got rid of the clauses. So yeah, that means clauses. he can't go. And then <clears> all <throat> this drama that we've been sort of yeah. witnessing the past few weeks is no longer going to be a, an annual event. Yeah, the only thing that's disappointed me, I think he's suffered. I think his brand suffered. I think Newcastle is a very proud working class town and I don't think anyone is bigger than the football club. And I'm talking the Andrew Johns days, the, the Danny Badiris, Paul Chief Harrigan days. And I think the way this has been conducted, and I don't think it's necessarily true, but he's been made to look bigger than the organisation. And I don't think I, that's I his doing. No, no, You're a no, bit unfair I, on I, there, no, Buzz. I, hold on. I, I think if you follow Knights fans on social media, they have been quite upset with the way his party have conducted the negotiations. Yeah, but not him. I wouldn't say... Kay you know, I think Kalen has a really unique... He's the we all know he's then. got a very unique relationship with his father and the way that operates. And I'd be... You know, Kalen has implicit trust in his dad as his agent and his manager and to negotiate this stuff. And I, you know, all this talk about deals being pulled and his father having to apologise to people. Carlin wouldn't have any idea about that stuff. Well, you know, needs, what I said to today... To know, though, well, does he, he know? Yes, I mean, he does. He does needs he? to know. Why? Yeah. You don't think what? he's been damaged? His no, I don't think he's been damaged at all. And he, it's his contract, and if it all went bad... We'd be sitting there saying, well, mate, why didn't you read the, the, the contract? Why didn't you go through it? Why, didn't, why aren't you aware of this? You're, you're accountable to yourself. He, no, he should, I, I would encourage him to know more. I mean, if you... 16 years to say 21, 22, and you're just coming into grade, and you know you've got that support from your family, and you, you, whether you have an agent or not, you're a little bit, I suppose, young and immature. But when you get to, the, to this age, you should really know what's going on. The other thing is too, Andre is very naive about the whole business, and Andre doesn't know the business like he. Well, to be fair, he did a pretty good deal for him last time, though. Oh, Kenty, you know, to be fair... Seriously, if you couldn't do a good deal with Karl Ponga as your time. client, if you could not do a good deal with Karl Ponga, you ain't trying. Well, Rudy, you said there was a lot going on with Andre and the deal and was it yeah. pulled, wasn't it pulled, and then the meeting with Wayne yeah. that apparently was... Uh, yeah, was you really, spoke to him today. I spoke to him today. Everybody I was supposed else. to have sat with him down for about a half hour after this um, and it was interesting what they said about the meeting with Wayne. They basically said... And Dave, Dave Ricco talked a bit about it last night, that Wayne was pretty brutal. Caitlin said it was a pretty brutal meeting. Wayne... Um, you know, didn't hold back on him and basically challenged him. And But they walked out of that meeting. I said to them, was there a moment when you thought, I'm staying in Newcastle? It was actually when they walked out of that meeting. Okay. He and his father looked at each other and, and when I was sitting with them and yeah. said, we basically walked out of that meeting, looked at each other and decided, Why? that's it, we're staying in Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's, if, uh, if I'm Newcastle, that mm. sends off a five-bell alarm for me. Because well, if Wayne managed to challenge you to become the player you, got, you, you can be... 
and you don't want to, and arguably the best coach we've seen, if you don't want to do that under the best coach you've seen, you said, no, I'll go back to the safer confines of Newcastle. If I'm Newcastle, I'm saying, what have I just thought? Yeah, but that's one way of looking at it, Kenny. But his view was... Good way of looking at it. His way, of, his way of looking at it was, I can achieve all that in Newcastle. You know, I spoke, before the pre-season started, he wanted out. He was going to leave. But once the pre-season started, he was back around the club. They've opened a new centre of excellence. Adam O'Brien's obviously committed long-term. Well, why didn't he sign two weeks ago when he because walked out of the Star of the Sea? You've said he decided two weeks ago. Well, because he set this drag on a back page story every second day. Well, the CEO's overseas, Buzz. Well, you don't... He's still overseas. He signed today. Yeah. Reedy, what did Wayne say to him about Newcastle? <laughs> well, he basically said to him, is that the place where you're going to achieve what you want to achieve? Is that the right environment for you? That's the sense... And were they right. offended by that? Well, if I'm Newcastle, I'm probably not overly happy no, about but it. I mean, no, I, I was mean, Caleb. I think... Oh, I think they were a bit put off. But I, I, don't think, I don't think they liked it. Okay. You know, I think that their view of it was Wayne's not within think... the walls of this organisation. Wayne doesn't know what's going on down here. So, mm. you know, I think it was a bit... I think they were confronted by it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd say offended by yeah, it, but yeah. I certainly think they were confronted by it. I, I think Buzz makes a really valid point, though. If that meeting was two weeks ago, mm. there's only two clubs in the bidding process. You've walked out and decided after that meeting you don't want to be part of the Dolphins. Why has it taken two weeks? They weren't arguing about money. And, 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 and well, sit there and deny the allegation, the, you know, the, the, the reports that uh, the deal was pulled. That would also marry into this narrative, that the fact that the Knights got frustrated themselves and said, you know what, enough's enough with all the games, because if you're not staying there, which you might, might, might or might not have told us, either way... What, what possessed them to go two more weeks and string this out? Well, they were obviously still in negotiations with the Knights. I, d I don't know why it took so long, but I know that they shook hands on a deal, according to them, last week. So the deal was done last week. Why? Uh, and and we're going to get know, onto this in a little while. I'm not so sure where they're going to, because his father admits in text messages there was a problem he had to go and sort, and I think the problem yeah, was... Yeah, well, he said today, mm. um, Andre said that Bulldog needs to be accountable for... Uh, misreporting. But, I don't think he did misreport. But, but he said he needs to be accountable. Well, Can let's he... go through the text messages, OK? So, so Peter O'Sullivan, yeah. the Dolphins recruitment boss, texts Andre last night at 8.26pm. Hi, Andre, you must be busy, a lot being written, etc. Would appreciate the call to tell me where things are at, please. Now, this is last night. Hmm. It took him 12 hours to respond. Sorry, I have other issues concerning first. This is not me reading poorly. And heading into the club today to address that's the circus that's been caused. So he's admitted, Andre's admitted that yeah. Peter O'Sullivan, the, the Dolphins recruitment guy, that there's been issues, OK? Sorry, mate, I'll get back to you today, definitely. Doesn't end there, though. So that's a chance for Andre to say to O'Sullivan as a courtesy, mate, we, we're probably going to sign with the Knights today, or at least commit to the Knights. Mm. But instead of doing that, he continues to mislead him. He says, so O'Sullivan writes back, thank you, if you've agreed as suggested... Just let us know so we can adjust our thinking. There's not a more blatant way to, possess, to present I that asked question. Him, I asked him about this. You should Kenny. know better, mate, than to listen to media. And I, 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 come I said to them, have you, know, have you let Wayne and Peter O'Sullivan know? This was before, hang on. before hang on, the hang announcement. On. See what today's news brings. If he didn't know Kenny. at 8.30 this morning... Well, he did. Clearly they did. Well, Clearly why is he not being honest? Because why is he, where's because his, his honour and integrity? Was, where's his honour and integrity? I'm not arguing with that. I don't think it's the right thing to do, but I'm just going to tell you what his view was. Andre's view was, this is Kalen's announcement. I want him to be able to announce it to the world. I don't want to potentially share it with people. Uh, was, one was already and it out. Gets out. Two was just telling a rival. You, you know just what, telling hello, you. Hello, hello, hello well. <laughs> you, you, but hold on. You know what a common courtesy is here? I agree. It's, I and agree. It, it's also good manners. I agree. Particularly Wayne Bennett standing in the game. It's not for Andre to ring him, but for Callan to, Callan to pick up the phone. Not only that. And he would have rung him by now. And, and but I agree. That. He should have not rung him. Hold that. on. Wayne Thank Bennett you. got on a plane and flew down to meet and have the meeting and sit down and negotiate and deliver what he believed was some, some harsh truths. I'm it not, doesn't get the courtesy of your phone call. I'm not arguing with you. I think they should have told them before the me, before the announcement. But why, why not? What I'm just telling you is it's why. just unnecessary. I don't understand why this. But this is the naivety. But this is, but this is what with. I was talking about at the beginning of the show about the damage that's been done to his reputation over the handling, particularly over the last fortnight. And you can wind the the, the failure to contact Wayne Bennett who, as Kenny said, jumped on a plane, drove to the Central Coast, booked a penthouse, shouted lunch, did everything he could to woo the kid, 
And I think Wayne Bennett of all, it was entitled to a phone call. And, and, and if after all that he is so comfortable misleading Peter O'Sullivan, then who else has been misled? I don't disagree that he should have informed Peter and Sully and, and Wayne Bennett before the, before the announcement today. I don't disagree with you. I'm just telling yeah, you, I, I, the I, rationale I, I behind you it was yeah. that he wanted Carlin to have his moment. We all get that, And, and we if all it was an experienced yeah. agent, he probably would have organised it and no, got it. And that, that might be the point. The Pongers took, got you to Newcastle today. They probably shouted your lunch over Mary Mother's <laughs> No Mother lunch. Please. I haven't had lunch. <laughs> or breakfast. We go on. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that, they and, asked and him to Snickers go up. Look, I know no one cares about our job and what we do, but they asked him to go up there, we, and they didn't tell you that they actually got a call at press conference today. He's driving up, they put the press conference on. <laughs> Yeah, but you know why that means? Well, I'm not playing. I'm not a victim. It's Please, right. I'm not a victim but here. it's Keystone Cop stuff. Yeah. Seriously, you but don't ring a bloke up and say, mate, come up and we'll talk to you. We'll give the exclusive interview. And then on the way up, you find out they're holding a press conference. Yeah, it's a bloke. It's, 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 it's a body bloke. Oh, mate, you should have turned the car around. The big question here is, yeah. have Newcastle made the right decision? Uh, and will he be... Uh, will he bring them a premiership? Will he be the well, right buy? I'll buy. start by saying I don't think... At this stage, he's a $1.2 million player. I think if you were weighting all the players in the comp and you've got Turbo on 1.2 and Cleary on 1.2, I think he's probably worth 750 800k. Oh, come on, no, no, please let me finish. But it's like a house auction. Yeah. If you get a big bid player, from Mark. Redcliffe... <laughs> Well, it is. Well, that's it, it oh, Mark, But he's point. not worth that much you're, money, you're, in my you're opinion. You are worth whatever someone is yeah. willing you, to pay. What do you think he's worth? Whatever someone is willing to pay. Would if, I, if I'm Newcastle, would I pay 1.2? No. I Thank wouldn't you. have paid that. And not only that, if Newcastle want to win a comp in the next five years, he's going to need help. Because the roster they've got... Oh, I, I think he's a million dollar player. Yeah, I think he's yeah, a million dollar player. I, I don't disagree with that. It's just what he brings, brings you on the field. It's what he brings off the field. He brings you a off the field. I would say on his new contract, he had obviously player options the next two years. Now, th those two years have been scrapped. It's a complete yeah. new five-year deal, right? So it starts from next year. What makes it interesting is because they've scrapped the last two years, so effectively he said, I'm not taking up the player options. If you start the contract process mm. again, theoretically they can reshape the next two years in terms of what they pay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they've got to get that past the NRL, but it allows them some flexibility in terms of their You're salary cap for the less. next two years. Really, no one ever takes less. Well, no one ever renegotiates a contract I think his best, is, his best is ahead of him. And, and it's got to be. Th this will settle him down now. We can get back and focus on Newcastle. I think Newcastle still need to buy a few players that might yeah, that's to, my to, help, but, to help him win but, the Premiership. But, but, but you know what my point is? Your man, Cameron Munster... Is worth 1.2 million, but Cameron Munster's played for Australia over long, won a Wally Lewis medal as player of an Origin series. He's won premierships. Won two premierships. Yeah. Now that's what you value him in comparison yeah. to the great could players. I, could I would also say that Cameron Munster's had Billy Slater, Cam Smith, uh, the Melbourne Storm around him. He hasn't. You know, he's been doing it on his own for a I long time. I bet the Pong has paid for lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I had lunch. He's got dessert as well, for yeah, sure. 